In astronomy, Kepler's laws of planetary motion are three scientific laws describing the motion of planets around the Sun. The orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. A line segment joining a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. The square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of its orbit. Most planetary orbits are nearly circular, and careful observation and calculation are required in order to establish that they are not perfectly circular. Calculations of the orbit of Mars indicated an elliptical orbit. From this, Johannes Kepler inferred that other bodies in the Solar System, including those farther away from the Sun, also have elliptical orbits. Kepler's work published between 1609 and 1619 improved the heliocentric theory of Nicolaus Copernicus, explaining how the planet speeds varied, and using elliptical orbits rather than circular orbits with epicycles. Isaac Newton showed in 1687 that relationships like Kepler's would apply in the Solar System to a good approximation, as a consequence of his own laws of motion motion and law of universal gravitation. Topic. Comparison to Copernicus Kepler's laws improved the model of Copernicus. If the eccentricities of the planetary orbits are taken as zero, then Kepler basically agreed with Copernicus. The planetary orbit is a circle. The Sun is at the center of the orbit. The speed of the planet in the orbit is constant. The eccentricities of the orbits of those planets known to Copernicus and Kepler are small, so the foregoing rules give fair approximations of planetary motion, but Kepler's laws fit the observations better than does the model proposed by Copernicus. Kepler's corrections are not at all obvious. The planetary orbit is not a circle, but an ellipse. The Sun is not at the center but at a focal point of the elliptical orbit. Neither the linear speed nor the angular speed of the planet in the orbit is constant, but the area speed closely linked historically with the concept of angular momentum is constant. The eccentricity of the orbit of the Earth makes the time from the March equinox to the September equinox, around 186 days, unequal to the time from the September equinox to the March equinox, around 179 days days. A diameter would cut the orbit into equal parts, but the plane through the Sun parallel to the equator of the Earth cuts the orbit into two parts with areas in a 186 to 179 ratio, so the eccentricity of the orbit of the Earth is approximately e approximately equals pi 4 one hundred eighty six minus one hundred seventy nine one hundred eighty six plus one hundred seventy nine approximately equals zero point zero one five Display style e approximately frac pi 4 frac 186 to 179 186 plus 179 approximately 0 0.015, which is close to the correct value 0.016710219. See Earth's orbit. The calculation is correct when perihelion, the date the Earth is closest to the Sun, falls on a solstice. The current perihelion, near January 3, is fairly close to the solstice of December 21 or 22. 
Topic: <laughs> Nomenclature. It took nearly two centuries for the current formulation of Kepler's work to take on its settled form. Voltaire's Elements de la Philosophie de Newton, Elements of Newton's Philosophy of 1738 was the first publication to use the terminology of laws. The Biographical Encyclopedia of Astronomers in its article on Kepler, p. 620, states that the terminology of scientific laws for these discoveries was current at least from the time of Joseph de Lalande. It was the exposition of Robert Small, in an account of the astronomical discoveries of Kepler 1814, that made up the set of three laws, by adding in the third. Small also claimed, against the history, that these were empirical laws, based on inductive reasoning. Further, the current usage of Kepler's second law is something of a misnomer. Kepler had two versions, related in a qualitative sense the distance law and the area law. The area law is what became the second law in the set of three, but Kepler did himself not privilege it in that way. History Johannes Kepler published his first two laws about planetary motion in 1609, having found them by analyzing the astronomical observations of Tycho Brahe. Kepler's third law was published in 1619. Kepler had believed in the Copernican model of the solar system, which called for circular orbits, but he could not reconcile Brahe's highly precise observations with a circular fit to Mars orbit, Mars coincidentally having the highest eccentricity of all planets except Mercury. His first law reflected this discovery. Kepler in 1621 and Godefroy Wendelin in 1643 noted that Kepler's third law applies to the four brightest moons of Jupiter. The second law, in the area law form, was contested by Nicolaus Mercator in a book from 1664, but by 1670 his philosophical transactions were in its favor. As the century proceeded it became more widely accepted. The reception in Germany changed noticeably between 1688, the year in which Newton's Principia was published and was taken to be basically Copernican, and 1690, by which time work of Gottfried Leibniz on Kepler had been published. Newton was credited with understanding that the second law is not special to the inverse square law of gravitation, being a consequence just of the radial nature of that law while the other laws do depend on the inverse square form of the attraction. Karl Runge and Wilhelm Lenz much later identified a symmetry principle in the phase space of planetary motion the orthogonal group O acting which accounts for the first and third laws in the case of Newtonian gravitation, as conservation of angular momentum does via rotational symmetry for the second law. Topic. Formulary The mathematical model of the kinematics of a planet subject to the laws allows a large range of further calculations. Topic First law of Kepler The orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. Mathematically, an ellipse can be represented by the formula r equals p one plus epsilon cos theta. Display style r equals frac p one plus var epsilon 
cos theta, where p display style p is the semi lattice rectum, epsilon is the eccentricity of the ellipse, r is the distance from the sun to the planet, and theta is the angle to the planet's current position from its closest approach, as seen from the sun. So r theta are polar coordinates for an ellipse zero. At theta equals zero degrees, perihelion, the distance is minimum. R min equals p one plus epsilon display style r underscore min equals frac p one plus var epsilon at theta. Topic ninety degrees and at theta two hundred seventy degrees the distance is equal to P Display style P at theta equals one hundred eighty degrees, aphelion, the distance is maximum by definition, aphelion is, invariably, perihelion plus one hundred eighty degrees R max equals P one minus epsilon display style R underscore max equals FRAC P one var epsilon. The semi major axis A is the arithmetic mean between R M I N and R max. R max minus a equals a minus R min a equals p one minus epsilon two. Display style begin aligned R underscore max a and equals a R underscore min three p t a and equals frac p one var epsilon caret two end aligned. The semi minor axis B is the geometric mean between R m i n and R max. R max B equals B R Min B equals P one minus epsilon two. Display style begin aligned FRAC R underscore max B and equals FRAC B R underscore min three P T B and equals FRAC P S Q R T one var epsilon carrot two end aligned. The semi lattice rectum P is the harmonic mean between R M I N and R max one R min minus one P equals one P minus one R max P A equals R max R min equals B two display style begin aligned frac one R underscore min frac one P and equals frac one P frac one R underscore max three P T pa and equals R underscore max R underscore min equals B carrot two end aligned the eccentricity epsilon is the coefficient of variation between R M I N and R max, epsilon equals R max minus R min R max plus R min. Display style var epsilon equals frac r underscore max r underscore min r underscore max plus r underscore min. The area of the ellipse as a equals pi a b. Display style a equals pi ab. The special case of a circle is epsilon. Topic zero, resulting in r p. Topic r m i n. R max Topic A B and A equals Pi R two equals Topic Second Law of Kepler equals 
A line joining a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. The orbital radius and angular velocity of the planet in the elliptical orbit will vary. This is shown in the animation, the planet travels faster when closer to the Sun, then slower when farther from the Sun. Kepler's second law states that the blue sector has constant area. In a small time d t display style dt the planet sweeps out a small triangle having base line r display style r and height r d theta display style r d theta an area d a equals 1 2 r r d theta display style da equals frac 1 2 c d o t r c d o t r d theta and so the constant aerial velocity is d a d t equals 1 2 r 2 d theta d t Display style FRAC DA DT equals FRAC one two R carrot two FRAC D theta DT The area enclosed by the elliptical orbit is Pi A B Display style Pi ab So the period P Display style P satisfies P one two R two D theta D T equals Pi A B Display style P C D O T F R A C one two R carrot two F R A C D theta D T equals Pi ab and the mean motion of the planet around the sun N equals two Pi P Display style n equals frac 2 pi p satisfies r 2 d theta equals a b n d t Display style r caret two d theta equals a b n d t. Topic: Third law of Kepler. The square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. This captures the relationship between the distance of planets from the Sun, and their orbital periods. Kepler enunciated in 1619 this third law in a laborious attempt to determine what he viewed as the "...music of the spheres," according to precise laws, and express it in terms of musical notation. So it was known as the harmonic law. 
Using Newton's law of gravitation published 1687, this relation can be found in the case of a circular orbit by setting the centripetal force equal to the gravitational force m r omega 2 equals g m m R two display style Mr Omega carrot two equals G frac m r carrot two. Then, expressing the angular velocity in terms of the orbital period, and then rearranging, we find Kepler's third law. M r two pi T two equals G M M R two T two equals four Pi two G M R three T two R three Display style mister left FRAC two Pi T right carrot two equals G FRAC M R carrot two right arrow T carrot two equals left FRAC four Pi carrot two GM right R carrot three right arrow T carrot two propto R carrot three a more detailed derivation can be done with general elliptical orbits, instead of circles, as well as orbiting the center of mass, in stead of just the large mass. This results in replacing a circular radius r with the elliptical semi-major axis a as well as replacing the large mass m display style m with m plus m display style m plus m however with planet masses being so much smaller than the sun this correction is often ignored the full corresponding formula is a three T two equals G M plus M four Pi two approximately equals G M four Pi two approximately equals seven point four nine six ten minus six O three days two is constant Display style FRAC a carrot three T carrot two equals FRAC G M plus M four Pi carrot two approximately FRAC G M four Pi carrot two approximately seven four hundred ninety six C D O T ten carrot minus six left F R A C text O carrot three text days carrot two right text is constant where M displaystyle M is the mass of the Sun M displaystyle M is the mass of the planet and g display style g 
is the gravitational constant T display style T is the orbital period and a display style a is the elliptical semi major axis the following table shows the data used by Kepler to empirically derive his law upon finding this pattern Kepler wrote for comparison here are modern estimates topic planetary acceleration Isaac Newton computed in his Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica the acceleration of a planet moving according to Kepler's first and second law. The direction of the acceleration is towards the Sun. The magnitude of the acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of the planet's distance from the Sun the inverse square law, this implies that the Sun may be the physical cause of the acceleration of planets. However, Newton states in his Principia that he considers forces from a mathematical point of view, not a physical, thereby taking an instrumentalist view. Moreover, he does not assign a cause to gravity. Newton defined the force acting on a planet to be the product of its mass and the acceleration. See Newton's laws of motion. So, every planet is attracted towards the sun. The force acting on a planet is directly proportional to the mass of the planet and is inversely proportional to the square of its distance from the Sun The Sun plays an unsymmetrical part, which is unjustified. So he assumed, in Newton's law of universal gravitation, All bodies in the solar system attract one another. The force between two bodies is in direct proportion to the product of their masses and in inverse proportion to the square of the distance between them. As the planets have small masses compared to that of the Sun, the orbits conform approximately to Kepler's laws. Newton's model improves upon Kepler's model, and fits actual observations more accurately. See two body problem. Below comes the detailed calculation of the acceleration of a planet moving according to Kepler's first and second laws. Topic: <coughs> Acceleration vector. From the heliocentric point of view, consider the vector to the planet r equals R R carrot display style math BF R equals R hat math BF R where R display style R is the distance to the planet and R carrot display style hat math BF R is a unit vector pointing towards the planet d r caret d t equals r caret equals theta theta caret d theta Carrot D T equals theta carrot equals minus theta R carrot Display style FRAC D H 
at Math BF R D T equals dot hat Math BF R equals dot theta hat bold symbol theta Q quad F R A C D hat bold symbol theta D T equals dot hat bold symbol theta equals dot theta hat Math BF R where theta carrot Display style hat bold symbol theta is the unit vector whose direction is 90 degrees counterclockwise of r caret display style hat math bf r and theta display style theta is the polar angle, and where a dot on top of the variable signifies differentiation with respect to time. Differentiate the position vector twice to obtain the velocity vector and the acceleration vector r equals r r caret plus r R carrot equals R R carrot plus R theta theta carrot R equals R R carrot plus r r caret plus r theta theta caret plus r theta theta caret plus r theta theta caret equals r minus r theta 2 r caret plus r theta plus 2 r theta theta caret Display style begin aligned dot math BF R and equals dot R hat math BF R plus R dot hat math BF R equals dot R hat math BF R plus R dot theta hat bold symbol theta D D O T Math BF R and equals left D D O T R hat Math BF R plus dot R Dot hat math BF R right plus left dot R dot theta hat bold symbol theta plus R D D O T theta hat bold symbol theta plus R dot theta dot hat bold symbol theta right equals left D D O T R R dot theta carrot two right hat math BF R plus left R D D O T theta plus two dot Dot R dot theta right hat bold symbol theta end aligned so R equals A R R carrot plus a theta theta carrot Display style D D O T Math BF R equals a underscore R hat bold symbol R plus A underscore theta hat bold symbol theta where the radial acceleration is A R equals R minus R theta 2 
Display style a underscore R equals D D O T R R dot theta carrot two. And the transversal acceleration is a theta equals R theta plus two R theta Display style underscore theta equals R D D O T theta plus two dot R dot theta. Topic Inverse square law. Kepler's second law says that R two theta equals N A B display style r caret two dot theta equals nab is constant. The transversal acceleration a theta display style a underscore theta is zero. D r Two theta d t equals r two r theta plus r theta equals r a theta equals zero Display style FRAC D left R carrot two dot theta right DT equals R left two dot R dot theta plus R D D O T theta right equals raw underscore theta equals zero so the acceleration of a planet obeying Kepler's second law is directed towards the Sun. The radial acceleration A R displaystyle a underscore text R is A R equals R minus R theta two equals R minus R N A B R two two equals R minus N Two a two b two r three Display style a underscore text R equals D D O T R R dot theta carrot two equals D D O T R R left F R A C nab R carrot two right carrot two equals D D O T R F R A C N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot three Kepler's first law states that the orbit is described by the equation P R equals one plus epsilon cos theta display style frac P R equals one plus var epsilon cos theta differentiating with respect to time minus p r r 2 equals minus epsilon sin theta theta 
Display style FRAC P dot R R carrot two equals var epsilon sin theta dot theta or P R equals N A B epsilon sin theta Display style P dot R equals nap var epsilon sin theta. Differentiating once more P R equals N A B epsilon cos theta theta equals N A B Epsilon cos theta N A B R two equals N two A two B two R two Epsilon cos theta Display style P D D O T R equals nab var epsilon cos theta dot theta equals nab var epsilon cos theta F R A C nab R carrot two equals F R A C N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot two var epsilon cos theta The radial acceleration a R display style a underscore text R satisfies P A R equals N two a two B two R Two Epsilon Cos Theta minus P N two A two B two R three equals N Two of two B two R two Epsilon cos theta minus P R Display style pa underscore text R equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot two var epsilon cos theta P FRAC N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot three equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot two left var epsilon Cos theta frac p r right. Substituting the equation of the ellipse gives p a r equals n two a two b two r Two P R minus one minus P R equals minus N two a 
two R two B two Display style pa underscore text R equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot two left FRAC P R minus one FRAC P R right equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two R carrot two B carrot two The relation B two equals P A display style B carrot two equals pa gives the simple final result A R equals minus N two A Three R two Display style underscore text R equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot three R carrot two. This means that the acceleration vector R Display style Math BF DDOT R of any planet obeying Kepler's first and second law satisfies the inverse square law R equals minus alpha R two R carrot Display style Math BF D D O T R equals FRAC alpha R carrot two hat Math BF R where alpha equals N two O three Display style alpha equals N carrot two a carrot three is a constant and r caret display style hat math bf r is the unit vector pointing from the sun towards the planet and r display style r is the distance between the planet and the sun according to kepler's third law alpha Display style alpha has the same value for all the planets. So the inverse square law for planetary accelerations applies throughout the entire solar system. The inverse square law is a differential equation. The solutions to this differential equation include the Keplerian motions, as shown, but they also include motions where the orbit is a hyperbola or parabola or a straight line. See Kepler orbit. Topic: <laughs> Newton's law of gravitation. By Newton's second law, the gravitational force that acts on the planet is F equals M planet R equals minus M planet alpha R minus two R carrot display style math BF F equals M underscore text planet math BF D D O T R equals M underscore text planet alpha R carrot minus two hat math BF R where M planet Display style m underscore text planet is the mass of the planet and alpha display style alpha 
has the same value for all planets in the solar system. According to Newton's third law, the Sun is attracted to the planet by a force of the same magnitude. Since the force is proportional to the mass of the planet, under the symmetric consideration, it should also be proportional to the mass of the Sun. M Sun Display style M underscore text Sun. So Alpha equals G M Sun Display style alpha equals gm underscore text sun, where g display style g is the gravitational constant. The acceleration of solar system body number i is, according to Newton's laws, r i equals G J does not equal I M J R I J minus two R carrot I J Display style Math BF D D O T R underscore I equals G sum underscore J N E Q I M underscore J R underscore I J carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore I J where M J Display style M underscore J is the mass of body J R I J display style R underscore I J is the distance between body I and body J R carrot I J Display style hat math bf r underscore i j is the unit vector from body i towards body j, and the vector summation is over all bodies in the solar system besides i itself. In the special case where there are only two bodies in the solar system, Earth and Sun, the acceleration becomes r. Earth equals G M Sun R Earth Sun minus two R carrot Earth Sun Display style Math BF D D O T R underscore text Earth equals GM underscore text Sun R underscore text Earth text Sun carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text Earth text Sun Which is the acceleration of the Kepler motion. So this Earth moves around the Sun according to Kepler's laws. If the two bodies in the solar system are Moon and Earth the acceleration of the Moon becomes R Moon equals G M Earth R Moon Earth minus 2 R carrot Moon Earth Display style Math BF D D O T R underscore text Moon equals GM underscore text Earth R underscore text Moon text Earth carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text Moon text Earth 
So in this approximation, the Moon moves around the Earth according to Kepler's laws. In the three-body case the accelerations are R Sun equals G M Earth R Sun Earth minus two R carrot Sun Earth plus G M Moon R Sun Moon minus two R carrot Sun Moon R Earth equals G M Sun R Earth Sun minus two R carrot Earth Sun plus G M Moon R Earth Moon minus two R carrot Earth Moon R Moon equals G M Sun R Moon Sun minus two R carrot Moon Sun plus G M Earth R Moon Earth Minus two R carat moon, Earth, display style, begin aligned, Math BF, D D O T, R underscore, text, Sun, and equals GM underscore, text, Earth, R underscore, text, Sun, text, Earth, carat minus two, hat, Math BF, R underscore, text, Sun, text, Earth, plus GM underscore, text, Moon, R underscore, text, Sun, text, Moon carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text sun text moon math BF D D O T R underscore text earth and equals GM underscore text sun R underscore text earth text sun carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text earth text sun plus GM underscore text moon R underscore Text Earth text Moon carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text Earth text Moon Math BF D D O T R underscore text Moon and equals GM underscore text Sun R underscore text Moon text Sun carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text Moon text Sun plus GM underscore Text Earth R underscore text Moon text Earth carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text Moon text Earth end aligned these accelerations are not those of Kepler orbits, and the three body problem is complicated. But Keplerian approximation is the basis for perturbation calculations. See lunar theory. Topic. Position as a function of time Kepler used his two first laws to compute the position of a planet as a function of time. 
His method involves the solution of a transcendental equation called Kepler's equation. The procedure for calculating the heliocentric polar coordinates r, theta of a planet as a function of the time t since perihelion, is the following four steps. Compute the mean anomaly m equals n t where n is the mean motion. n p equals 2 pi display style n c d o t p equals 2 pi radians where p is the period compute the eccentric anomaly e by solving kepler's equation m equals e minus epsilon sin e display style m equals e var epsilon sin e compute the true anomaly theta by the equation 1 minus epsilon tan 2 theta 2 equals 1 plus epsilon tan 2 e 2 display style 1 var epsilon tan caret 2 frac theta 2 equals 1 plus var epsilon tan caret 2 frac e 2 Compute the heliocentric distance. R equals a one minus epsilon cos e. Display style R equals a one var epsilon cos e. The Cartesian velocity vector can be trivially calculated as v equals mu a r minus sin e 1 minus epsilon 2 cos e Display style Math BF V equals FRAC SQRT mu A R left Langle sin E SQRT one var epsilon carrot two cos E right wrangle. The important special case of circular orbit, epsilon. Topic zero gives theta. E equals m because the uniform circular motion was considered to be normal, a deviation from this motion was considered an anomaly. The proof of this procedure is shown below. <laughs> mean anomaly, m The Keplerian problem assumes an elliptical orbit and the four points S the Sun at one focus of ellipse Z the perihelion C the center of the ellipse P the planet end A equals C Z Display style A equals C Z Distance between center and perihelion, the semi-major axis. Epsilon equals C S A. Display style var epsilon equals C S over a. The eccentricity B equals a one minus epsilon 2 
Display style B equals a SQRT one var epsilon carrot two. The semi minor axis R equals S P display style R equals S P the distance between sun and planet theta equals Z S P display style theta equals angle Z S P the direction to the planet as seen from the sun the true anomaly the problem is to compute the polar coordinates r theta of the planet from the time since perihelion t it is solved in steps kepler considered the circle with the major axis as a diameter and x display style x the projection of the planet to the auxiliary circle y display style y the point on the circle such that the sector areas zcy and zsx are equal m equals z c y Display style m equals angle z c y. The mean anomaly. The sector areas are related by z s p equals b a z s x. Display style Z S P equals F R A C B A C D O T Z S X. The circular sector area Z C Y equals a two M two Display style Z C Y equals F R A C a carrot two M two. The area swept since perihelion Z S P equals B A Z S X equals B A Z C Y equals B A O two M two equals A B M Two Display style Z S P equals F R A C B A C D O T Z S X equals F R A C B A C D O T Z C Y equals F R A C B A C D O T F R A C a carrot two M two equals F R A C A B M two is by Kepler's second law proportional to time since perihelion. So the mean anomaly, m, is proportional to time since perihelion, t. m equals n t display style m equals n t where n is the mean motion. Topic: Eccentric anomaly E. When the mean anomaly m is computed, the goal is to compute the true anomaly theta. The function theta equals f m is, however, not elementary. Kepler's solution is to use E equals z 
C X display style E equals angle Z C X X is seen from the center, the eccentric anomaly is an intermediate variable, and first compute E as a function of M by solving Kepler's equation below, and then compute the true anomaly θ from the eccentric anomaly E. Here are the details. ZCY, equals, ZSX, equals, ZCX, minus, SCX, A2M2 equals a 2E2 minus a epsilon a sin E2 display style begin aligned, ZCY, and equals, ZSX, equals, ZCX, SCX, FRAC a carrot 2M2 and equals, FRAC a carrot 2E 2 frac a var epsilon c d o t a sin e 2 end aligned division by a two halves gives Kepler's equation m equals e minus epsilon sin e Display style m equals e var epsilon sin e. This equation gives m as a function of e determining e for a given m as the inverse problem. Iterative numerical algorithms are commonly used. Having computed the eccentric anomaly e, the next step is to calculate the true anomaly theta. But note, Cartesian position coordinates reference the center of ellipse are a cos e, b sin e. Reference the sun with coordinates c zero. Topic a zero r a cos e a b sin e. True anomaly would be arctan ry, rx, magnitude of r would be square root rr. Topic: <laughs> True anomaly theta. Note from the figure that c d equals c s plus s d display style over right arrow c d equals over right arrow c s plus over right arrow s d so that a cos e equals a epsilon plus R cos theta display style a cos e equals a var epsilon plus r cos theta dividing by a display style a and inserting from Kepler's first law r a equals one minus epsilon 2 1 plus epsilon cos theta display style frac r a equals frac 1 var epsilon caret 2 1 plus var epsilon cos theta to get Cos E equals Epsilon plus one minus Epsilon two one plus Epsilon cos theta cos theta equals epsilon 1 plus 
epsilon cuz theta plus 1 minus epsilon 2 cuz theta 1 plus epsilon cuz theta equals epsilon plus cuz theta 1 plus epsilon cuz theta Display style cos e equals var epsilon plus frac one var epsilon caret two one plus var epsilon cos theta cos theta equals frac var epsilon one plus var epsilon cos theta plus left one var epsilon caret two right cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta equals frac var epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus var epsilon cos theta the result is a usable relationship between the eccentric anomaly e and the true anomaly theta a computationally more convenient form follows by substituting into the trigonometric identity tan 2 x 2 equals 1 minus cos x 1 plus cos x Display style tan carrot two FRAC x two equals FRAC one cos x one plus cos x get tan 2 e 2 equals 1 minus cuz e 1 plus cuz e equals 1 minus epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta 1 plus epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta equals 1 plus epsilon cos theta minus epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta plus epsilon plus cos theta equals 1 minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 1 minus cos theta 1 plus cos theta equals 1 minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon tan 2 theta 2 
Display style begin aligned tan carrot two FRAC E two and equals FRAC one cos E one plus cos E equals FRAC one FRAC var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta one plus FRAC var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta Eight PT and equals FRAC one plus var epsilon cos theta var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta plus var epsilon plus cos theta equals FRAC one var epsilon one plus var epsilon C D O T FRAC one cos theta one plus cos theta equals F RAC one var epsilon one plus var epsilon tan carrot two FRAC theta two end aligned multiplying by one plus epsilon gives the result one minus epsilon tan two theta two equals one plus epsilon tan two e two display style one var epsilon tan carrot two FRAC theta two equals one plus var epsilon tan carrot 2 frac e 2 this is the third step in the connection between time and position in the orbit topic distance r The fourth step is to compute the heliocentric distance r from the true anomaly theta by Kepler's first law R one plus epsilon cos theta equals a one minus epsilon two Display style r one plus var epsilon cos theta equals a left one var epsilon caret two right. Using the relation above between theta and e, the final equation for the distance r is r equals a one minus epsilon cos E display style r equals a one var epsilon cos e. Topic. See also. Circular motion. Free fall time. Gravity. Kepler orbit. Kepler problem. Kepler's equation Laplace runge lens vector Specific relative angular momentum, relatively easy derivation of Kepler's laws starting with conservation of angular momentum Notes <laughs> <laughs>